Our next section, we're going to look at linear and quadratic inequalities. Um, first thing I want to do is I'm going to talk about linear. You solve linear inequalities the exact same way you solve linear equations. Basically doing inverse operations, subtracting the same thing from both sides, multiplying or dividing both sides by the same thing. Except if you multiply or divide, by a negative, you reverse the inequality symbol. Okay, so to go along with an example for that, we're going to do one of them that is actually in the notes. Um, I'm going to do negative 3x plus 7 is greater than 19. So my first step is I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. That's going to give me negative 3x is greater than 12. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And I have to flip the symbol. And that would be my answer. Um, for purposes of this class, if answer is a single inequality, For example, this one, variable on the left, okay? If I have a compound inequality, for example, if I had this number line, put negative three, two. I'm gonna make this one a hollow dot. I'm gonna make this one a solid dot. So if you have a compound inequality, lowest number is on the left. And we're always using less than or less than or equal to on here. So for this one, I would write negative three is less than X, which is less than or equal to two. The so smallest number on the left, biggest number on the right. Um, you've been doing these since at least the eighth grade or should have been doing these since at least the eighth grade. So that's all I'm gonna talk about linear inequalities. So next, we're going to talk about quadratic inequalities. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we are going to find the... Um, they're not necessarily going to be intercepts here because if there's not an equal sign, there's going to be a hole in the graph. Find the x intercepts of quadratic. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> and we're gonna and we can use any method we wanted to here. We could factor. We could use the quadratic formula. Um, we can solve by taking square roots. Um, and then what we're going to end up doing after that is we're going to do some sign analysis. On each region. And you're going to see what I mean about regions when I work through the examples. So the first one I am going to do is I want to solve this inequality, negative x squared plus x plus 6 greater than 0. I want to know when the graph on the left is positive. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a negative 1. Because I, in order for me to do stuff with quadratics, I want that first term positive. Okay. So if I multiply everything by negative 1, I'm going to get an x squared minus x minus 6. Don't forget to flip the symbol. Because I multiplied or divided by a negative number. Next thing I'm going to do is factor it. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to negative 1 are x minus, so I'm going to end up with x minus 3 times x plus 2. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, the way the book shows you, and then the way, um, I would prefer you to do it because when we get beyond quadratics, um, it gets messy if you do it the way the book shows you. So what the book says, we're going to put these solutions on the number line. So that would be a 3. That would be a negative 2. Notice here, um, there, there is no equal sign part here, so those are both going to be hollow circles. Okay, basically zero there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick, let me move this up. I'm going to pick a number in each region. I'm going to pick easy numbers to use. So, for example, in this area, I'm going to put a negative 10 in. In this area, I'm going to put a 0 in. And in this area, I'm going to put a 5 in. Any number in that region will work. It, I don't care what you do. I'm going to put those numbers in. So for here, and all I care about is whether the stuff is positive or negative. So if I put a negative 10 in for x, in this problem, x minus 3 is x plus 2. I put a negative 10 in here. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so this is positive. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a 0 in. And so let's do x minus 3 times x plus 2. I put a 0 in here, I get a negative. I put a 0 in here, I get a positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. And the last one I'm going to put in is a 5. And so I'll do x minus 3, x plus 2. Um, 5 minus 3 is positive. 5 plus 2 is positive. Positive times positive is a positive. So that's the sign of my quadratic in each of those regions. And now I need to answer the question. I want to know when is it negative? Well, it's negative between negative 2 
and three um, round brackets because of the no equal sign here. If I wanted to write this as an inequality, I would write negative two is less than X, which is less than three. That's the way the book shows you how to do that analysis. Once you factor it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each factor one on top of the other. I'm going to write it like this, x minus 3. I'm going to write the x plus 2. I'm going to make my number line here. And when x minus 3 is 0, it is 0 at 3. 0 here. When x plus 2 is 0, it is 0 at 2, the negative 2. And if the coefficient in, your, in front of your linear term is positive, everything to the left of your 0 is going to be negative. Everything to the right of your 0 is going to be positive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the sign analysis in each region. Again, I'm going to get a zero here. I'm going to get a zero here. Negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a positive is negative. And a positive times a positive is a positive. And again, I'm going to end up with the exact same answer I had for the last time. I want to know when is it negative. It is negative between negative 2 and 3. Or in inequality notation, negative 2 less than x is less than 3. I recommend doing it on the, right hand, the method on the right-hand side. Because you're going to end up having things that have more than two factors. And if you start doing it the way we're going to do it when we start talking about polynomial functions, where we have three or four factors that we have to deal about, or rational functions where you have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, um, you're going to need to be able to use the method that's on the right. So that's how you do it. I'm going to do at least one more, maybe two more examples. Um, let's do the example 3, 3B that they have in the book. I'm going to do it the way I recommend doing it. So example 3, 3D. They want to solve 3X squared plus 13X greater than or equal to 10. Okay, the way we solve this is we solve it like we solve quadratics, which means the first step I have to do is I have to get everything on one side with a zero on the other. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the 10 over by subtracting the 10. Okay, now I'm going to factor it. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 30 that add to 13. So that would be a 15 and a negative 2. That 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. 15 minus 2 is 13. So I'm using the slide and divide method um, with a little trick. So the way I would do this is I would write x plus 15 over 3 times x minus 2 over 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Our next step would be to simplify anything we can and any remaining factor would have to come out in front. So this would just become x plus 5. This would become 3x minus 2. And I want to know, when am I greater than or equal to 0? 
So what I told you to do to figure this out is you're going to write each factor, one on top of each other. You are going to make a number line underneath it. X plus five is zero at negative five. Three X plus two minus two is zero at positive two thirds. And when we do it this way, because the leading coefficient in both of my linear terms is positive, everything to the right of my zero is positive. Everything to the left of my zeros are negative. Then we do sign analysis. <clears throat> positive, I mean, negative over negative is a positive. Then I have zero. Put my zeros here. I'm positive out here on the right. And then I am negative in the middle. I want to know when am I greater than or equal to zero. So I am, am greater than or equal to zero on the following intervals. That interval and that interval. So I would write this as negative infinity to five. That's going to be a square bracket. That's a negative five, unioned with square bracket zero to infinity. If I want to write it in inequality notation, I would write x is less than or equal to negative five, or x is greater than or equal to two thirds. This zero right here is supposed to be a two thirds. Supposed to copy that number that I had right up there. Okay. I'm looking at your exercises that I am asking you to do here. I'm asking you to do 1B and F and 2A and F. Um... So let's go ahead and look at, I'm not gonna talk about any of the linear equations. Uh, you're doing two quadratic inequalities. I am gonna do two C from the homework. 3.3 3 homework, two C. That's the one is not assigned to you. Um, that's why I'm picking it. And it says, Two thirds x squared plus seven thirds x less than or equal to five. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all of the fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by three. That's going to give me two x squared plus seven x less than or equal to 15. Then I'm going to move the 15 over by subtracting it. It's going to give me 2x squared plus 7x minus 15, less than or equal to 0. I'm going to come up with my factors. And the factors I want need to multiply to negative 30. They need to add to 7. And to me, that's going to be a 10 and a negative 3. So this would be plus 10 over 2. This would be minus 3 over 2. The 2 I'm getting is because of that 2. So my final factoring is going to be x plus 5 times 2x minus 3. I'm now going to make my sign chart with the uh, x plus 5 and 2x minus 3.
First one is zero at negative five. Second one is zero at three halves. Make my positives to the right of my zeros. Make my negatives to the left of the zeros. Sign analysis in each region. Negative over a negative is a positive. Um, positive over here on the right also. Negative in the middle because I have a positive times a negative. I'm looking for when it is smaller than or equal to zero. Um, it's smaller than zero where it's negative. It is equal to zero here and here. So my final answer is going to be negative five comma three halves both with square brackets, or negative five, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to three halves. So that's it. We're gonna be using the same type of thought process a little bit later in this semester when we talk about regular generic polynomial and rational functions.